Hello, this is Damien Kirk, back for part four of my series of videos explaining this wonderful Minecraft processor. Alright, so this video is going to be about all the stuff that's over on this side, which is the clock and the program counter and the branching hardware. So the first thing to look at here is the clock. Um, basically the way this works is as long as this isn't, right now it's stopped, but as long as this isn't on, this torch will turn on, and after a long delay through all these repeaters, that signal will turn the torch back off, and once that off signal comes back through, then it turns on, and it'll just cycle like that, you know, on and on until it gets stopped again. So, every time that there's a pulse from this torch, it goes through this, which is just a little pulse shortener. I think I've heard it called a monostable circuit. Basically, that just ensures that it's only a couple of ticks instead of t staying on the whole time the clock is on. And that goes through this, which updates the program counter and through this line which goes to the right signal so it gets anded with the red right uh, control signal it says if this is an instruction where we're writing do it now and same with the the print signal on, on the the output hardware so uh, let's take a look at first of all what uh, is holding this clock off right now so this torch is powering this redstone wire which is holding this torch off the way to let the clock run is to turn this torch off by activating this wire. And there are two things that do that. One is this line, which is coming from the run button over there. So this will hold the torch off long enough to let the clock get going and, you know, start the program. It'll run, it'll execute the first instruction, which should already be ready to, to go. And then it'll update to the next one through this line. That, and that's on a slight delay, so that the right and everything will go through first. The other thing that will hold this off is this line over here that's going over the uh, program counter. Now the way this works is these are uh, D latches, I guess. Yeah, that's the term for them, D latches. Uh, I did not design these, but basically the way they work is that if there's a signal, the signal, okay, what is it? The D input is coming in here and the C the clock input comes in here. So whenever this block gets powered, this updates its output state over on the right to whatever is coming in here. Whether it's 1 or 0, it'll update to that. And the way this works is uh, with this redstone wire. This redstone wire is what holds this off or doesn't hold it off. So it also does the same thing for this block. So this, these torches that I've put on the backs of these are also, you know, they, they have the same state as the actual latches, whatever the latch is actually holding. So all these torches are also will power this line if they're on. So and so if any of these are one, then this will this torch will be held off and the clock will be allowed to continue running. What that does is the clock is the clock is always allowed to run unless the program counter is at zero, like it is right now. So as long as it's zero, it'll stay stopped until you press the button. When you press the or the the run button. When you press the run button, it'll let the clock start, and it'll update the program counter to something else, which will let the clock keep running. And it'll run until the program counter is zero again, which is until it loops around from the 31 instruction, or until you branch back to zero. Um, this does mean you can't use zero as the begin beginning of a loop, but in general you won't need to do that anyway, because usually the, the first few instructions are uh, add immediates and stuff to load values in. But yeah, you should be aware of that when you're programming it. You can't use zero as the beginning of your loop, because if you branch back to zero, it will just stop. Although that does allow you to have an exit command where you just unconditionally, or well, you know, you say if zero equals zero, branch to the amount that you need to be for the program counter to be zero again, and then that'll basically exit the program. It'll stop executing. So let's take a look at uh, how this updates. These torches that I've put on the back that are, you know, like I said, powering this line, also go back into these adders. So these are full adders. It's hard to see them underneath all this stuff, but each of these, so this is a, a compact version of a full adder. Again, I did not invent this design. I kind of understand how it works, but basically it takes an input here, an input here, and a carry-in here. In this case, it's not, uh, there's no carry-in, but for this one, you see it carries out right there and carries in here. So right now the way these adders are set up is one side is connected to 
the these lines, which are uh, I'll explain in a second. But the left sides of all these adders are getting these values from these lines, which is just whatever is already in the latches up there. So it's taking whatever is in the program counter up here and saying it that the result coming out of these adders is that plus whatever's coming in on the other sides. And every time the clock pulses, it'll update the latches to be whatever that is. And then, of course, the adders will update to add whatever else. Um, and that's how you update the, the program counter. Now, what it's actually adding to it is usually one. You can see right here, the right side is getting one, whereas the right side of all these other ones are getting zero. So it's adding one. But if this line is on, this is the branch line, like uh, telling you this is a, a state where we're going to branch. And these are all, this signal is anded at each of these with these values from the actual, um, the actual instruction. These are bits 5 through 1. Not 0, but uh, 5 through 1, which are the branch amount bits. So you can see this one, well this one is a little bit different because it's supposed to be 1. But if this line is on, this will hold this torch off so that this will only be 1 if that line is also on. So you don't get this on when it's not supposed to be. If the branch line is off, then the torch is allowed to be on so that it's always one. But for the rest of these, it has to be the branch line is on, where, you know, this is an instruction where we are branching, and that bit is on in the instruction. So if we were to, let's say we were to turn this on right now, uh, artificially. Let me just stick a lever on there. Now you notice that What's coming in here is now that, that bit that and that bit are now on, and I, I believe, yeah, this one is too, but it's because it's in the, oh, well, that's not supposed to be because it's being powered by the lever, but you can see that the, uh, it changes what it's actually adding to the program counter based on, on what those bits are. So that's how branching works. Now, take a look at how the branch condition is actually determined, whether or not Rather, whether or not we're actually branching. Uh, this is the branch signal from the control unit. And this is just saying this is a, con a command where we might branch. Now this is an XOR gate, which is XORing bit 6 from the instruction right here with the 0 output from the ALU, which is on only if uh, the two registers it's reading are equal if it's in the right mode and everything. So, assuming this is a branch command, this is basically saying that if they are equal and this bit is off, then we're, you know, it's possible that we might branch here. Or if this bit, if this is off, which means they're not equal, and this bit is on, then we might branch here because this this bit is just switching modes between branch if equal and branch if not equal. So if both of these bits are on, then we're not going to branch because it's an XOR, and that would be branch if not equal, and they are equal, so there's no branch in that case. And then, of course, like you can see right here, if they're both off, this means that it would be um, a branch if equal, and they aren't equal. And in this case, the ALU isn't actually set to the right mode, but assuming that we are on a branch command, the 110 opcode, it would be. And then that gets added with the branch uh, line, just in case this you know gets mixed up somehow, and that determines whether it's time to branch. So hopefully that made sense. I feel like there's there should be more to say, but basically then these lines from the the latches go into the decoder that I explained before for the instruction file. Um, yeah, hopefully that explains everything. I think that's everything for over in this section. Next, I should be covering the register file right over there. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.